Ephesians 1, 2, and 3, correct? Yes, that's it. That is it. They're all there. It is in the background. Let me fix this to hear a little go bit. Go ahead, fix it. Get there. You go. Do it. Do it up oh, for me. There we go. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Uh, how are you all doing today? We are doing fantastic. I'm glad you decided to join us today. You know. You know. Yeah. I was, no. You know, of we course, I was going to you. join. It was no, just. We'll a, talk um, about you if you didn't. It, it was a. Um. I didn't know what time zone you were all in. Okay. okay. Right. So. Okay. Wait. So wait, what time? I, I don't know why I thought that you were in Chicago. That's where I was born, but yeah, no. you, okay. See, I, I knew I got it from somewhere. <laughs> you smelt so, the energy, huh? You smelt it on me. I think I, I can't it hide it. Yeah, yeah, you got you got you got to shine all over you, okay? Right, <laughs> so so okay. So, when did you? I gotta, you know, I gotta be a little nosy, so I'm gonna delve into you a little personal. So, when did you go from, from Chicago to Nevada? Well, actually, it's a long story, so if you want to go through my whole life. I was in Rockford. I was born in Chicago. That's where all my family is at. Okay. And then I was in Rockford, Illinois until about 12 years old. Then I moved to Atlanta. Then I moved back to Chicago. Then I moved to Texas. Then I moved back to Atlanta. Then I moved back to Texas. Then oh, I my moved God. Here. <laughs> <laughs> I have been across. I've been abroad. You understand? So um, I've been here in Vegas for about 10 years. And like I stated, I moved here from El Paso, Texas. Okay, okay. Right. So you know, I got I always have to ask. I'm always curious as to the people, the idea of Texas. What is it like? What is it like to be in Texas? Uh, Texas. I love Texas because uh, Texas is a state of responsibility. Um, yeah, Texas is a state of responsibility and respect. You know, oh. so if we're gonna if we're gonna lean on the re we might as well slip in republic there too you know so no, um no. mind your business um have respect towards what you do and everybody salutes everybody and everybody stays in their own lane and that's the experiences i've had in el paso texas and also i have a lot of people in um dallas texas as well okay. and i also got a couple some family members in houston so I've been all through Texas and uh, nice, big, wide roads. Um, everything is big in Texas. That is true. Okay. Um, so, yeah, I, I love Texas. You know, if, if if I had to move from Las Vegas, that would be probably the only location I would go to. Wow. You know what? I have I've heard people speak of Texas, but never the way you have. Because right. I, it has never seemed appealing to me. Because I think it's too hot. Oh, God, no. It's just too hot. So when I lived in California, I, we would always um, uh, kind of pass the uh, the outskirts of Texas of um, not not El Paso. I can't uh, can't think of it. I can't think. anyway. I, I Austin, it. not Austin. Um, Brianna, what was the part? Texas, the Dallas, panhandle, the Panhandle. Okay. The Panhandle. Okay. So just okay. always driving because you know it's the Midwest. So you, you hit that tip of, of of Texas, but yeah. Yeah. So I'm, I'm glad I'm glad you gave me a better a better view of Texas because I didn't have a really good positive uh, thought about Texas. So I'm glad you clarified that for me. Right. Well, I, I could give you far more positivity about Texas than I can Atlanta, Georgia. I will tell you that. So listen, I'm scared of Atlanta, Georgia too. Yeah, you <laughs> listen. You <laughs> stay away. You understand? Stay away from Atlanta. Oh my but, gosh. Yeah, but oh my uh, God, I yeah. I love Texas. Um, because I grew up in Illinois and I grew up dealing with a lot of snow and a lot of yeah. hardcore weather. Mm -hmm. I'd rather deal with some sweating than deal with some shoveling. You know, Listen, I'm right where you are right there. That's, that's what I'm saying. We're preparing for our transition to the West coast to, to, um, to, to California. So yes, I lived there for 20 years and then relocated back to the Midwest. I'm like, I am so over the snow. I'm so over freezing. It, it is amazing. It's just amazing. Right. Yeah, yeah. Okay. So now, now I know a little bit about ooh, how you you moved around. You you don't let any grow under your feet. You let you let, let no rocks or moss grow under your feet. You just keep it moving. Right. Um. Yeah. Because I've lived in so many different places, I've definitely become self sufficient and very observant okay. of people and their you know human behavior and um how people operate communicate with each other and you know the geographical differences like i stated in between texas oh, and that. atlanta right you know so i definitely understand culture i've been through a lot of culture shocks for sure you know and um you know hey. 
is, is that what led you to write the book? It's a kicked out of heaven. But when you say when you say that, it's also you're giving us uh, backstories of of you're giving us backstories on on the white race. I'm gonna hit you right back. Okay. Sorry and, about that. Go ahead. Uh, do you know what? Yours is ringing in mind at the, at the same time. Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> it happens. You know, business folks, we still gonna answer that phone real quick. Yeah, you right. know? You're, like, you're like, wait, wait, hold on. I gotta dis I gotta dismiss you for a hot second. Right. Okay, yeah, I don't understand why these people keep calling. What what is it that? I think sometimes it's the um the, you're trying to sell yourself or whatever. And and it's like they, they just keep calling you on and over over again. Oh my god, this this is like call number five. Why did you keep calling me? Right. Okay. Well, so so anyway, uh, you, you want to talk about the white race. Why was that important to you to, to, to put that in series? Well, like I said, culture shock. I've been in a lot of different places. Uh, I have no problem with white people. I tried to write the book as unbiasedly as possible. Okay. Um, there's a, I, and my last name is Booker. So okay. I've been reading books since a very young child. You know, when, you know, I started out with Tom Sawyer. Huckleberry Finn, you know, all the original okay, okay. medieval classics when okay. I was a kid. Okay. So I was already started on that route. And then, you know, I wasn't comfortable with, you know, a pilgrim. You know, when when we were growing up, you know, we were taught, oh, yeah, the Hawaiians, they have the coconut bra and the, and the grass skirts and, you know, uh, the black people, they wear the beads and they do the dance and slap the drum. Okay. And the Indians, they have the, the TP homes mm -hmm. and they have the totem pole and things of this nature. You know, little images that we would get through Warner yeah. Brother cartoons and things yeah. of that nature. <laughs> but when it came to, um, you know, Snow White and the Seven Dwarves or Cinderella, you know, uh, um, all of these stories are medieval stories too. The three little pigs and mm -hmm. things of that nature. So when it came down to a hard history line of who are Europeans or, you know, I, w I pilgrim was not settling for me to tell me that you're a pilgrim. You met some Indians and had a Turkey does not tell me yeah. who you are. Mm -hmm. And then um, the cultural influence there's a lot of influence on other races. A lot of a lot of other races want to mimic, um, you know, Caucasians and Europeans and how they operate. And then not only that, I grew up in a white neighborhood okay. until until the age of twelve. So there was a lot of things that I saw as a kid, like, "Yo, why are y'all moving like this? Why are you know, what what's the mechanism here? You know?" And um, it just always stuck to me. I you know I didn't understand the complexity. That was embedded inside of every industry. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of hurdles. Um, and Europeans got a chance to operate off of nepotism. And so, oh, well, okay. Yeah. I th and I think that's accurate. I think that's accurate. Right. So I needed to understand how are y'all kicking the world's ass? You know, like y'all kicking everybody <laughs> ass. Right. I didn't understand. <laughs> Excuse my French, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But yeah, excuse moi, okay, is what I'm saying. But y'all kicking the planet, okay? Y'all got military bases everywhere, you know, you have influence. You know, I've been to Hong Kong before, mm -hmm. and every, everybody, the Chinese, they wear three piece suits or wearing suits, and they got smoking cigarettes and holding briefcases. So your influence crosses the line everywhere, worldwide. Wow, that's wow. A, that's a great, uh, great analysis. Great analysis, anyway. Right? How are you kicking so much hide? You know, you're kicking a lot of ass. I need to know. <laughs> you know, and I understand that it's a unison. Mm -hmm. You know, in order for you to do that, you have to have a large militia. There has to be some form of unison and understanding amongst you all in order to to move in a synchronicity and in, in so many different departments. That's, that, is, so that, that is so brilliant. Um, right. Did you, did you that? Because, because we always, as, as black people, we always say that we're not united. And uh, and I always say that's accurate. That, right. that, that is correct. But also, does that mean that we cannot uh, prosper? Because uh, even though we're not as united as you just you just so eloquently said it with as the white race. Right. Is that possible? Um, well, I'm going to tell you right now. This is true. We're not truly united. Uh -huh. But the things that it takes for us to be the united are extremely dark. Okay? Wow. Explain. Come on. 
Uh, they're extremely grotesque. I don't think you want me to explain. <laughs> it's in the book. By now, you understand. By now, go to kickdownheaven.com. Okay. <laughs> and, and, and it is explained in here, but there is a lot of um. So, for instance, I'll try to be as light as possible with it. Okay. Okay. Um, bathing, for instance, they have bathhouses. They used to sit in wood tubs of water for hours and hours and hours. They used to play games and play violins in these tubs. This is also where the term don't throw the baby out with the bathwater comes from. Oh, okay. Right. Because the baby was the last one to bathe in a tub, a wood tub of water that the whole family bathed in. Okay. okay. Right. See, you see that? You see the face you just made? You see so you find that as disgusting, but when you understand things on a chemical level, this is called DNA unification. Dang, that is see that? That's deep. You see that? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, another layer is a lot of plagues and a lot of diseases that went on from 1347, which was the Black Death, all the way into the Great Plague of London, which was in 1666. Okay. There was a span of 300, 400 years of, of all different sorts of plagues. Um, across all of Europe. Sometimes they will wipe out all men. Sometimes they will wipe out all children. Uh, sometimes it would attack the females, but rarely. And that's part of the reason why it's, things fell into the witch burnings, okay? And okay. when you understand what the witch burnings are, there was 500 years of consistent burning of women at stakes. And wow. it was done in every single country wow. in Europe. So that means that the males had a unified thought and agreeance and they also taught their children this same mechanism for the span of 500 years. Wow. You see. So, so, okay, what you just explained to me, it, it, it gives me more clarification as to the whole dynamic that we see now in the political realm with the whole uh, Trump thing. And I, and I asked myself, why, why do you still follow this man? And this is my opinion, knowing who and what he has done. It's almost as if it's it's cult like it's cult. Oh um, well, the hatred towards Trump is because Trump is a father, and we're in a fatherless nation right now. And who who would want Trump to be there for? Okay, okay, I'm I'm a loser at that one. I mean, but who would want Trump to be there? For? I mean, I'm gonna be honest. Trump is the the least father father like figure that you could I could ever even imagine. Well, I mean, you got to understand, um, his great-great-grandfather started making money off of hotels and brothels in Seattle, Washington, I believe. And uh, they stayed in the hotel industry, and the trade was taught from father to son, father to son, father to son. And he keeps his uh, children with him to this day. His children made millions during the course of his presidency. Um, and, and also during the course of his presidency, he's done a lot for black people as well. When we look at the facts now, if you want to fall into the space of the propaganda that the CNN and the Fox is trying to give you, which is also in sync with the black lives matter and also in sync with a lot of the riots that occurred during the 2020 COVID uh, situation, it's a, a hatred propaganda that's coming from the media is not and when you look at the facts of what he's done during the course of his presidency you wouldn't be allowed to have that uh hate he he's actually done more than what obama has done during his presidency well, well i'm going to respectfully disagree with you cuz i mean tell i want you know you tell me what what he's done because i i, I see nothing he's done i and people always want to get on um, to me on about the whole obama issue obama was because he's a black man does not mean he was a president for the black people and that people need to understand. People need to understand. Right, I understand and, that. And, and when I say that, he just couldn't do things for the black folk. You know, right. you're a president for a nation. Right. You know, and 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 I I I don't see Trump on that level at all, at right. all, at, at all. So I I will never agree with you and say he did so and so. Now I have heard I've had other black people here say that um, financial wise that that um, he made some financial um, I guess when it comes to like tax um, and things like that he gave people breaks at that were already at a certain level but some of that that didn't trickle down to everyone so mm -hmm. so i don't i don't see someone who, who um who insinuates a, a, a tax on our on, on our government as someone whose who's, who's leadership i need to i need to stand for 
I, I don't. When I see it, I, I don't. Oh, see well, that. I mean, and there's I a watched balance. it all unfold. Right. There's a balance to everything, uh -huh. but he did send everybody a check. He was the first president to do that. So we did get the stimulus check. Oh, okay. I, I'm going to be honest. I didn't get crap. So yeah, I didn't get one. Oh. <laughs> okay. So, you know, me, me, me and some of my partners said, we ain't getting nothing. We got nothing. I, you know, so I, I, I can't even say that either. So that doesn't oh, okay. mean anything to me either. So, okay. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, regardless, the, the Trump bloodline is in the werewolf section. There's okay. a person called Peter Stump, whose name was also Trump. And it goes back to the medieval. There's a, okay. a werewolf court trials of an individual that has this, a similar name as uh, Donald uh, Trump or Stump. Okay. <laughs> and, yeah, we need to go into that, you know, the werewolf section, because... I do have werewolf court trials in there, witch court trials, vampire court trials uh, that happened in the 1500s, 1600s, directly from their transcripts okay. inside the literature, you know. And uh, I mean, I don't know. I, well, I've I never mean, I, voted in my life. So that's a stop simple, it. You know. Okay. I'm going to need you to change that. You need to vote. <laughs> yeah, I've never voted. You, you, don't, you, don't, you, don't, you don't see the need to vote? Is that it? You don't, you don't see the, the purpose of it? Um, I go for guarantees in life, and there's no guarantee that your vote does anything. Oh, you okay. know, and then when you study the system, um, they're all related. They all, you know, all the presidents are related. They all come from similar ancestors, so on and so wow. forth. Wow. Yeah, you know, so, when so you do you think you'll ever turn this series into um some, some kind of like a television special or whatever? Because it's really interesting, and I, um, I give a different perspective for sure. Um, I, I don't think it would because what you're really looking at with the kicked out of heaven is the root material for Hollywood and Walt Disney. So basically everything that's been fed to quote unquote natives, me, you, Mexicans, Native American, Indians, is their history disseminated and and confused in a bit way to um to excite the natives and to also get paid off of them. So Harry Potter is all European folklore. Lord of the Rings is European folklore. You know, when they're talking about trolls and all of that stuff, there's stories of trolls in Ireland back in the 1300s in Scotland, you know, uh, things of that brownie, which is a term for a food and also a term for a Girl Scout rank. Yeah. Is, <laughs> is, it is also a little uh, troll. It's a form of like a gnome or a troll. Yeah. It, that's in uh european folklore it's sort of like a, a leprechaun you know uh so yeah. wh why was it so important for you to tell to, to to give us this why was it so important for you to for you just i know you said you it was like you learning but what do you want your readers to take from these different these series? These well different i mean you know look at our names my name is keenan booker keenan is irish for ancient and booker is anglo-saxon for bookmaker so we're in a system that we do not know. You know, uh, L is also a European name, like, um, you know, Bell, uh, B-E-L-L-E, -L -L -E, you know, and yeah, there's other variations on how it adds as a suffix or a prefix to a name. Elizabeth, you see what I'm saying? It's a, mm -hmm. it's a prefix. So um, we're in a cage that we don't understand. You know, we've all been on streets or parks or schools that are named after saints. Uh -huh. We don't know what those saints or who those saints are or what the history line is behind that. Um, and we have to understand what their operation is in order to operate within the system that's been basically slammed upon us. So the first banks were in Italy in 1300. Uh -huh. Lawyers, DAs, uh, investigation units, SWAT teams and things of that stuff have been operating in Europe since the 1400s and 1500s. OK, and we don't know nothing about it. The word felony is uh, by origin in the medieval times means suicide. So when you oh, commit. Wow. A, right. So when you commit a felony in America today, you are actually socially suicide. You're ostracized from the society. You're not able to uh, get a job. You're not able to buy a gun. You're not able to vote or things of that nature because you're underneath the spiritual context of a felony or a felon okay there's many words that are loaded up with uh underneath human sacrifice and a lot of other things that uh have a spiritual context that are very strong 
So calling somebody a drunkard or <laughs> using the word relax, the uh, the word relax was a term that the Spanish inquisitors used uh, when they took witches to the state. They would say, we're going to relax you. Right. Wow. Right. So that means, you know, taking a or the word. Well, that means, you know, uh, a pacification towards death. OK. And that's how we use the word today is an inquisitive format. If we're having a conversation right now and somebody calls your phone and they're going crazy on the phone, you're going to say, relax, relax, right, relax right. with the intent to pacify. Or if you say, you know, I'm going to go in the home and relax real quick and lay down on the couch, that term relax means the, the cousin to death. Sleep is the cousin to death, right? Yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. So the so the energy that's loaded inside the word to put out the influence and the power and the activation upon you came from thousands of uh, bodies and human sacrifice within the usage of that word in a different time period. Do you think that because like uh, a moment ago you mentioned um, the history of someone's name? Do you think that the um, history of someone's name? Um, plays a role in how they live their life? Oh, yes. Very much so. It is a part of your, and not only that, but also the day that you were born. And um, this is a this is a different science. So, but it's still correlated because we're underneath European names and we don't know what their operation is. So your last name is actually your occupational name. Okay. So your job is already in your last name, whether you like it or not, you will that be is in so out interesting yeah you will be the so there's a lot of people out here who are confused about what they want to do in their life and they don't even understand that they've been doing it since birth because it's already operative in your last name so so it has to do um when you talk about last names you know women get married and they change their last names so would, 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 would that translate into you doing um into something or is it your birth name is it what you name you you were born in born with at birth? Um, yeah, it, it's 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 your birth name, and then it will it can switch up. That's all depending on if the female wants to be occupational, because uh, you know our country was developed off of farm lifestyle. So re regardless, and then there was trade as well, and and other things that synced with it. But the majority of America was farm lifestyle. And uh, as it merged and, and we got more industrial, our names, uh, you know, sufficed what their original occupation was. OK. That is so, that is so, OK. So since we're on that, we're going to build a fun. My maiden name is Smith. Married name is Ellen. So how does that translate to you? Because Smith, I think, was blacksmith. Yeah, but there's a lot of different forms of Smiths. So there's a blacksmith, metalsmith, goldsmith. You could also be a wordsmith. There's a lot of different forms of smiths. So it would actually sync with what your middle name or your first name is. And then you can also find uh, the trace amount evidence through your parents or what your parents were doing or what your grandparents were doing with that same last name. OK, now, Ellis, I would have to look up what an Ellis is, you know, uh -huh. um, in order to give that to you, which I could probably do right now. But <laughs> let me see here. Because I, I, when you were speaking on that, I do believe that. I, I, I do believe your, your, your name plays a role in, in, in the career that, um, that, that you choose. Right. Um, so so that, that, that was so smart um, to me. So you, you definitely right. got to, yeah. The name Ellis means kind and benevolent. So that's what you're doing right now. You're being kind and benevolent. Oh. By doing yeah. a podcast. That's kind. Oh, that's kindness. Okay. That's, ki that's kindness. Oh, okay. Okay, but I was always curious about Smith because I know Smith, I think, has a lot of Irish, I think, um, mm -hmm. attached to it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, so mm -hmm. I, you, you, you just made my afternoon. So I need, I need you to either do a podcast on this whole series or you got to get you got to get a movie. Well, I've done a lot of webinars. I've, if you go to my YouTube channel. I have many, many videos and I, there's actually three DVDs that go with each book. Okay, okay, hold those books up. Let's show let's let's show them. Let's, let's see. I want to see those books. Whoa, that's huge. Yeah, they're they they are designed to replace grandma's Bible in the living room. Okay, I know you remember that. <laughs> so yeah, this is this is the one that has the executioner's diary in it. 
goes okay. over a thousand years of uh natural disasters inside the book that's the first chapter wow um yeah there was reports of you know large hailstones about the size of pizzas you know that uh yeah so basically like i was telling you stories like snow white actually came from experiences it developed into folklore stories because in between 1300 and 1700 there was a time period called the little ice age Okay. And the and the little ice age, it got to about negative 40, negative 50 degrees below zero. So things got frozen over. They said you could hold a cup of wine outside the window and it would freeze over in less than a minute. You know, and you know, alcohol isn't supposed to freeze, you know. So, yeah, if this is volume two. Wow. Yeah, this is volume two. This is where all the dark stuff is at. Okay. So if you read this. You have to read volume three. Now, volume three is about medieval Catholicism. Okay. But with inside medieval Catholicism, which is the origins of Christianity, we have black Madonnas. You see that? I see that yeah. These are all black Madonnas that are worshipped all across the planet. Wow. There's over, there's over 120 of them okay, yeah. uh, inside this literature. Okay that represent uh, the divinity of black women and the uh, and basically the chaos of outer space that they represent and what the black race represents in the realm of chaos, okay? That's what the black Madonna and, uh, you know, symbolizes. There's also a lot of black more saints in that book as well, so. So, so what, what's the next, uh, next phase for you? Because Kicked Out of Heaven, volumes one, two, and three. So what's next for you? Well, that isn't the last books I just wrote. The last books I just wrote is called The Encyclopedia on the Alchemy of Women. Okay. Did you say on How to Meet Women? No, no, not How to Meet Women. The, oh, okay. encycl the Encyclopedia on the Alchemy of Women. Oh, the Alchemy of Women. Oh, explain. Oh, it's, it's, it's big. It's huge. Yeah, this is uh this literature right here. Boom, here goes another one. Woo! Yeah, this is heavy. This is heavy yeah, stuff, yeah, you know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, what's inside that literature? I'm going over female names and explanations. A lot of women's names are actually attached to the genus of certain animals and certain plants and certain insects. Wow. So, like a Vanessa is a butterfly, a Jenny is a donkey, a Jessica is a spider, you know, and those play off in the characteristics of how the females operate. Okay. There's also I, I a lot believe of, that. Yep, I believe that too. I, I believe there's something that goes on with women. Yeah. Right. You know, like uh, since a Jenny is a donkey, she'll be good working in the uh, dentist industry. She might. <laughs> Did you say, I, know you <laughs> I saw that, but you know, she she might she might have a big hide on her on the back. You know, she may oh get real God. loud. She might she might be real loud with her laughter when she she gets a little inebriated off the alcohol. Oh, you know, the fe fetal alcohol syndrome is explained in there. The chemicals that are inside makeup and perms and all of that stuff is explained in there, oh. and how they affect the female. Um, the process of gestation, two hundred eighty days of uh, labor. I mean, of the embryo oh. development is also explained inside that literature. Um, what else? I have a lot of stuff in there. You know, okay. a lot of stuff. Barbie is defined in there. Betty Boop and her origins are defined in there. Um, you know, a lot of stuff that comes out of the Bible, the Quran, and also the Torah is inside that literature. So, you know, yeah. yeah. Man, okay, I, okay, I, I have to get these books. Now, they're huge, and, and I, I'm not a voracious reader, but I, I, I read. But I'm right. going to have to read, I'm going to have to read this, this series. Okay. I might take the rest of the year, but I'm gonna read them. Okay, yeah, because the kicked out of heaven is serious stuff. So you will hear screams. You, yeah, it's it's that clear. It's that clear in the space of reality and what's in your genetic code. Okay. And you're so, giving me chills. I'm, I'm gonna have to read these when I'm wide awake in this daylight. But yeah, exactly. Yeah. You know, if you buy now, I have a nighttime light and a little teddy bear yeah. that comes with the book. Okay. <laughs> So, you know, because each book has its own torture chamber in it, you know, I do oh sit down God. and show you what the executioners were doing. And like you said, the last name Smith, the executioners were usually the Smiths in the beginning because they were the ones creating the torture devices. So they had to understand how to smelt metal. 
Wow. Right. Well, well yeah, I, I do have some, some days that I can, like, you know what, I could really, you know, you have, you have some of them thoughts that you can really mess them up. Those thoughts do come come across every now and then. Yeah. So I'm glad I know the origin of where it comes from. I, I, right. I, I get it. I get it. Right. Mr. Keenan Booker, man, I have run out of time. They told me I'm over. Okay. They told me I'm over. So I got to get out of here. But you know, you have just enlightened me. You got to come back. I'm I'm ready whenever you are. You you, you got to come back on, on a Tuesday when, when when my partners are here because I know Doctor Fight is going to we'll have a lot of questions for you. I just just skim the surface, so right. I'm gonna I'm gonna give a date when you come on back during during the daytime at one o'clock. Okay. You come on Tuesday because I got I gotta have you here. Okay, that's fine. Uh, everybody, thank you for having me. Go to kickedoutofheaven.com right now. I'm the only one underneath the sun that has this three volume in color. And it's for fifty dollars right now. Okay, it's the whole the whole set. The whole set is oh, only wow. for fifty dollars, and there's over a thousand pictures, and they're all in color, and they come with a certificate of authenticity. And uh, if you were to purchase it from Amazon, you will not get it alive with the colors in it. Okay, because this literature is alive. Okay, I didn't know what a magic book was until I wrote one. I'll tell you that. I never heard that until you just said that this book is alive. See, I learned I learned a lot new today. No, many many things new today. So right. thank you, Mr. Booker, author. You got, you have to come back. This is so interesting to me. I'm gonna have thoughts about this conversation all day, just to let you know. And if I get some weird thoughts, I'm gonna email you. Gonna right. Okay. You yeah. That. If you have any questions, of course. <laughs> if you have any questions about anything I've stated or anything that you've read or heard me be foul mouthed about online, you just go ahead and contact me directly, and I'm pretty sure I'll be able to give you an explanation for whatever I stated. You know. Will do. Thank you so much, you guys. You guys have been on it today. I don't know what all the comments. Well, I can't even get to the comments today, but I'll get to them and I'll answer them when I get offline. Because yeah, they have been on here listening listening to you today. We should okay. be very proud about that. Because yeah, they were they were in for you today. Right, and I'm sorry about being late. I'll most definitely be punctual next time. We got our time zone thing fixed. So now, I don't. Now do that I know that you're on the West Coast, I yeah. I, I would let you know that because I said my other guest he he was on before you and he was uh, he's in San Diego. And so I, he knew, he asked me the same question. I was like, yeah, you're at noon, so you was at 1230, but it's all good. Right. It's all good, yeah. yeah. Okay. You, you made it in. I'm glad, I'm glad I didn't have to talk bad about you. No, no, no. I'm, right. going, I'm, <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to be here. I am reliable, okay? I'm reliable, all right. okay? Okay. All right, all right. So, yeah. all right. Thank all right, you. All right. Thank you so much, and enjoy the rest of your week, and we will be talking to you soon. Okay, thank all you. All right, all right. Have a good one. Bye-bye. Right. You guys, it has been a fantastic Wednesday. I said we're going to kick this week, this, the month off with great guests, and we have done just that um, with uh, author Keenan Booker and uh, the uh, Eric Sage, Eric Sage musician. Great conversation. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Went over a little bit today, right? But um, it's all good. Thank you guys for tuning in. I, I think I think it was like on the on the views. Yeah, yeah. I said like, wow. Okay, so they was on it today. Thank you guys. You guys were, were viewing like crazy today. So thank you. Thank you so much. Is it really? Oh, wow. Thank you guys. Make sure you come back and join us on. Yeah, it was all good. Thank you. And join us back on Tuesday for something to talk about with Dr. Fight and uh, author. Oh, okay. So... Oh, okay. Good deal, then. Awesome. Awesome. All right, you guys. We will talk to you soon. Uh, everybody who's on Mr. Booker's site, go and find us and make sure you follow us every week on Tuesdays and Wednesdays. In the meantime, in the between time, see miracles in life every day. Just do one of these. Just give a smile. It's all good. Peace out.